see it sets out these criteria that only one of these should be met not all have to be met just one only one so when the controller or processor is established in eu regardless of where the processing takes place so we will talk about who a controller is and who a processor is just after this slide but just remember these two words controller or processor whoever is established in eu irrespective of where they are processing the data if the data is being processed in india doesn't matter in china doesn't matter it will follow the gdpr because the controller and the processor are stuck the practical repercussion of this is that because the gdpr laws have become so stringent and a lot of paperwork has come on the companies that more a lot of mnc's now they are uh, doing demerge okay what they are doing is they are establishing their individual units in india for example if i take tieto tieto is a big company it has a branch of it has its main office in finland and offices in in, in i think 16 countries so they will establish tier india limited it will still be under the whole tieto umbrella but it they demerge it from the main tieto so that the paperwork doesn't become so difficult for them it is easy to establish an independent entity and meet the tutorial scope than have a merged entity and do a lot of paperwork that follows within so this has given rise to that also so see why i told you this because see how one law that comes into being and the problems or the repercussions of that law or the impact of that law gives rise to potential job opportunities potential headaches in another legal area basically so this it says that it where the control processor is based in europe regardless of where the processing takes place second processing of personal data of data subject relating to offering goods or services or monitoring behavior in eu where the data controller or processor is based in eu so the processing is also in the data controllers and processors also eu the first one was like irrespective of wherever the processing is the data controller and processor were in eu here everything is in eu processing control processor everybody then the third one processing of a person data by a controller or processor not established in eu but in a state where member state laws apply by the virtue of international law so the third one is that where the control and processor are not based in eu but the first data of the person whose personal data you are processing or the processing of personal data is is not in eu but in a state where member state laws are applicable so maybe a colonial state you can say where they still have it and then it will be applicable or or any country that has basically adopted gdpr or is working under the eu regime or have membership so companies like, so basically they've not left anything they've ensured that everybody comes within this domain irrespective of where the control processor is irrespective of where the processing is taking place as long as european umbrella is there it will gdpr will be applicable in such cases so just to revise it for you where the processor or controller is based in eu regardless of where the processing takes place where everybody is based in eu and the processing takes place in eu where the controller and process are not based in eu they are not based in eu the processing takes place in a territory territory means a jurisdiction a country where member state laws is applicable okay member state means european union laws are applicable so that will because in eu also some countries they are not a part of member state, like european union but Uh, uh, some of the european union laws are applicable on them so it is to cover those company countries also like those territories so just to be clear so that when we say controller and processor we mean companies that will process your data in different capacities as controllers and processor right right now yes so yes. when we do the concepts of controller and processor along with the joint controller bits slightly you will understand this example th these instances much better okay now so like no put this slide actually later that's after. that's totally fine we can come back and just discuss this again so that's totally yes. fine so just we'll just discuss right those now, concepts yeah just keep this in mind try to hold it okay yeah. yes just keep it in your mind that where is it territorially applicable controller processor in eu processing outside eu controller processor in eu processing in eu controller processor outside eu processing in any st member state applicable territory like wherever the law of member state is applicable that's it now the material scope so activities on personal data must meet the requirements of article 2 of the gdpr what does article 2 talk about article 2 talks about material scope so the processing of data we will also understand what is processing so the processing of personal data is wholly or partially automated uh, by automated means that processing is performed partly or without human 
an intervention. Just giving you an example of this. When we apply for a job, right? A lot of companies use these automated means to se select your first level of application. How do you get through it? For example, a company has come up with an application advertisement for job and it says that we need somebody with min maximum two years of experience and you put in your CV. The algorithm uh, will find out whether you have two years or more than two years. If the criteria is maximum two years, you have two years, one month, your CV gets out of it. Like it doesn't go to the next level. So that is processing partly by human intervention. And because when it goes to the next level, then the HR might find see that, okay, now this is, these are the CVs that meet the criteria, which I had set like maximum two years or minimum two years kind of criteria. And now I will find from that. So any processing performed partly or without human intervention. Processing other than by automated means that forms part of the filing system. Any kind of processing that means anything other than automated means that means processing even by humans. So see it, it just that since it is law it needs to be drafted in such a way that it becomes tricky for everybody who is not studying law. So that's why it is like this. So we can just simply understand all forms of processing by a human processing partly by human partly by automated means and exclusions to material scope include activities outside the scope of EU law enforcement and private security and purely personal and household activities. What is purely personal and household activities? That was decided in the Linquist case but I'll just give you a small example of it. I have put a camera outside my house just to see who, to ensure the security of my house. As long as that footage from the camera, whatever it's recording, is for my household purposes and I do not give it for any other processing activity. As in, for example, a murder happens and then I hand it over to the police. Then it doesn't stay for the household activities, right? Then it becomes processing of personal data. But as long as I'm just doing it to ensure that my house remains safe, then it is personal household activities. So those like household activities will include that personal. For example, if I am sitting in, in an apartment, I've just placed a camera outside my apartment to ensure that I'm getting lots of these uh, mails or somebody is constantly ringing the bell and running away. So I just want to see that I am not disturbed. So those are personal means. But what happens is that somebody from that building gets kidnapped and the police is asking. And then I say, hey, I have a camera. It might have seen something, recorded something. And I find that and I give it to the enforcement authority. Then it doesn't remain purely personal or household activity. Then the processing comes into GDPR. Like it's not excluded from the GDPR.